there is zero chance that this video won't work for you. This video deserves your full attention, so full focus on this. Let's begin. Step 1. Understanding the two types of fat. Before we get into the practical steps, you need to know that there are two types of fat. The first one is belly fat. We can see it and anyone is trying to get rid of it. And the second one is visceral fat. This type of fat is stored underneath the skin, around your internal organs, heart, intestines, all that stuff. Both of them create problems. However, visceral fat is the one that will create the worst, like the worst problems that you want to avoid. Like visceral fat can create really bad complications. But don't worry, I'll teach you exactly how to get rid of them. Step 1.1 your starting point. The secret that no fitness influencer has talked about and I don't know why. You must understand this first before starting all the diets, workout programs, whatever, supplements, whatever you want to do. I'm telling you right now, if you don't fix this first, if you don't understand this little trick, everything that you want to start, like let's say the ketogenic diet or whatever, won't work. Or it might work for like six months, but then you're gonna gain weight Again, so I'm gonna explain to you right now really quickly. So we have two hormones. First of all, disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. If you're interested in the subject and you want to learn more, you can search for Dr. Robert Lusting on YouTube. Basically what I'm about to teach you is from a lot of podcasts, so a bunch of hours and videos from him that I've watched and I just synthesized everything into the most important things so you can just learn it and implement it right away. Okay, so we have two hormones. The first one is leptin. Um, of course, I'm going to give you the bro science because like I said, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist or anything. So we have the leptin. Basically, leptin tells your brain that you've had enough food and that you must go and burn that energy, those calories. So in other words, leptin makes you want to burn calories. It tells you, it tells your brain that you've had enough food and you're actually happy to burn calories. Now, what happens when something that we're going to talk about in a few seconds blocks the signal of leptin? Your brain thinks that you're starving and it will affect you in two ways. First of all, you will want to eat more because your brain thinks you're starving. The second way it will affect you is that you will want to conserve, like not you, your body will want to conserve more energy. And basically you will conserve fat, you will store fat. What is the thing that blocks the signal of leptin? This is the most important question that we, you must ask. Insulin. Insulin blocks the signal of leptin. Insulin inhibits leptin's signal. Like this is so powerful to know. This is why you can't lose weight. Like literally the, the simple answer. So the higher the level of insulin goes, the more your brain thinks you're starving. And when your brain thinks you're starving, he will automatically turn on the systems. You will eat more, you'll, you'll be hungry, you will eat more, you will want to eat more, and you will want to move less. Because if you move, you will burn calories. So your brain thinks you're starving. So your brain says, okay, let's, let's conserve calories. Okay, let's move less because we don't want to burn calories because we're starving. We, we don't have enough food. So your first step, if you want to lose weight fast is to get the insulin levels down any way possible and there's no arguing about this like this might work for you no this will 100 percent work for you now how to lower the insulin levels the best way to get the insulin down is to get rid that means you don't want to eat you want to stay away from refined carbohydrates and we're gonna give examples and sugar this is your starting point if you skip this like if you skip this and you, you will still eat refined carbohydrates like pizza and all that stuff. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to give you some examples of refined carbohydrates. Pretty much anything that doesn't have fiber. If you were to, if you were to take two types of bread, we have white bread and whole, whole grain bread. The difference between them is that like the only, the only difference be between them is that the whole grain, the is that the whole the whole grain bread has all the nutrients and all the fiber. The white bread is just carbohydrates, like like no nutrients at all. Okay, so this is your starting point. Make sure you start with this. Now we can move on to the practical steps that will speed up the process. Step two: get rid of both types of fat. Some believe that those ten minute 
ab workouts will help them lose weight or they think that doing a bunch of crunches they will target the belly fat so if you train your abs thinking that you target the belly fat you just train your abdominal muscles okay you're not gonna target the belly fat in fact you can't target any fat anywhere onto your body the key to losing fat is to get into a caloric deficit consistently and do it long enough what about getting rid of visceral fat turns out that exercising will target visceral fat like if you exercise you will lose visceral fat so if you lose belly fat and you get lean that means you're losing visceral fat too as i said the only way to lose weight is to get into a caloric deficit consistently and do it long enough step three caloric deficit plan so far we've learned about the two types of fat and how can we actually get rid of them now let's go over the caloric deficit strategy that will 100 percent work for you most people think that it has to be hard or it has to be really strict but with this plan that i'm about to give you you will be able to get into a caloric deficit easily and consistently first we must find out your daily caloric intake so there's an app called my fitness pal i want you to download it after this video you add in your details and with this app we're gonna find out how much you eat in a day and if you don't know how to use the app you can watch a short tutorial on the on youtube secondly you must find out how many calories you should be eating in order to be in a deficit for this you want to use a calorie calculator you add in your details and you want to look for the weight loss number keep in mind that this number let's say for example 1800 calories to be in a deficit this number is not 100 percent accurate okay because we're different and you might need to adjust it over time but it is a good starting point so now we know your current calorie intake for example 2700 calories how many calories you should be eating to be in a deficit let me give you an example so we have your current calorie intake 2700 calories and the calories you should be eating in order to be in a deficit 1800 calories all we have to do is simply to close that gap between these two numbers one important thing that you must do when you use the the app called my fitness pal to track your current calorie intake and i don't want you to restrict yourself from anything like you eat as you normally eat in a normal average day you eat whatever you want because we must find out how many calories you get from the things that you want to eat okay so i don't want you to restrict from anything you eat as normal as possible you eat anything you want it's just a normal day but you you track the calories basically track the calories and at the end of the day you just have a, a number you can do this just one day or you can do this for a week so here's your actionable step this is how we're going to close the gap between these two numbers write down these big categories of food protein sources vegetables fats dairy fruits and high fiber next write down some reasonable healthy examples for each category so some reasonable healthy foods that you like for each category and if you don't know examples of healthy food from a specific category just search on google and i know for some of you it will be hard to give up on some unhealthy foods for example your favorite dessert or your favorite i don't know cake whatever you can either search for healthier variations of the food that you like for example pancake pancakes if you like pancakes just search for a healthier variation with high fiber and just eat that or if you still want to eat pancakes make sure you eat once a week or whatever but still be in a caloric deficit and there's your plan and the best thing about this is that you can make it as you want okay so with healthy foods that you like you enjoy it's not like a diet that you need to follow for six months and then you stop dieting and you gain weight again you can set this as a lifestyle which is very very powerful another aspect about diet that you must know is that protein has the highest energy cost of processing how much protein 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight this is the minimum in other words your body will burn more calories to process the protein than any other macronutrient okay good okay so step number four exercise the truth is that 
if you follow only the previous steps, you will lose weight. But this is the truth. You don't need exercise. You don't need to exercise in order to lose weight. But the previous steps in combination with exercise, it's a tool that will speed up the process and improve your health. And you don't want to be that guy who loses weight and now he wants to build muscle. So start doing some weightlifting sessions and some cardio sessions. You can also download my seven free workout programs link, the second link in the description. Step number five and the last step, sleep. I'm not going to sit here and talk about what happens when you sleep and the sleep stages and all that stuff. But it is important to know, like, like the only thing you need, you need to know is that if you don't sleep, if you're sleep deprived, you will eat more calories, you will eat more, you'll be more hungry and you will gain belly fat and visceral fat. So make sure you get at least seven hours of sleep every single night. Now, most people, when they hear this seven hours of sleep per night, they think that they need to have like seven hours in bed. No seven hours of sleep per night it's not the same thing with seven hours in bed because you won't fall asleep immediately so if your sleep efficiency is not 100 percent, make sure you get nine hours in bed to make sure you get at least seven hours of sleep that being said if you want to be part of our group make sure you click the subscribe button right now also my protocol in which i walk you step by step through the process of building a spartan body that means i'll help you lose weight and build muscle whatever you want to do in whatever stage you are right now it will 100 percent work for you go check it out right now to skyrocket your progress see you soon